All right. Man, it's always a shadow. It's always a shadow. I, I want to use this this thing, pop filter, but I always forget there's a shadow. And now, there you go. Okay. Uh, and I'm working with a another light source uh, other than my window, so I'm trying to test it out, see if that's viable, and I think it is. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, we're recording, we're rock and rolling, we're doing it. All right, my name is Joseph Louthen. Welcome to Theologicus, the study. And we are doing a, not a study, we are doing a, uh, well, it could be a study, um, um, but we're doing a family devotion. Now, um, I have said it once and I've said it uh, a million times that I'm not the biggest fan of introductions. And I don't want a standalone episode that's like, let me introduce you to what we're about to do for the next umpteen years. No, I mean, like, and then like, there's no Bible, right? Uh, so I'm going to hybrid this. I'm going to like kind of combine, uh, I'm going to introduce it because I think that's maybe appropriate. Uh, and then we're just going to dive straight into the text because the text is very straightforward and it's very simple. But my job here with the family devotion series is to take any book of the Bible and lead your family through devotions. And I am so burpy. I don't know what it is. It's like I am talking. If I'm talking a lot, then I start to get real burpy for whatever reason. And I don't have a cough button or a mute button, so just bear with me. Uh, I will try to do my best to... Uh, Kill the mic as it sees fit. In whom? So, uh, so if you come to my website, theologic.us, you can click on Family Devotions, Mark. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, a series of devotions. Now, if you have been reading this blog for a long time, you know that I actually have the Gospel of Mark already uh, completed. Uh, what I have done is because when I started this devotion like uh nine years ago uh i had a totally different format just real real simplistic i don't think i even had questions in it i think i just did like like i may have had one question or two so i wanted to rewrite my entire series uh kind of explain things kind of like um a ask like here's a series of questions you can ask and you'd be surprised uh you know, there are going to be some yes or no's or some one answer questions, and that's okay. Uh, it's just really helping to get you and your home kind of engaged into what's going on. Um, and again, I say family devotions. What I'm, I actually may change the series from family devotions, not to be exclusively like parent and kids, but like your home or like with your parents or whatever the case may be. Um, especially if you're, if you're like, with new believers, or if you're a new believer, uh, I feel like this series is going to be really, really beneficial. It's beneficial for, I think, anybody who uh, wants to sit apart. And hey, don't wait on me to get to the next episode. If you want to jump ahead, if you want to do twice a week, three times a week, by all means, whatever Holy Spirit is leading to you to do, just go ahead and do it. You know, uh, you have that freedom. Just go ahead and rip it. So uh, let's check out the introduction. So um, this is a story I had. Um, I, I have led my kids through the f the the gospel of Mark in its entirety from chapter one to chapter 16. And it, it's worth it. The fruit of that is just phenomenal. Uh, it's not. And, and keep in mind, it took me six years to do that. OK, so it's not a right. It's not a it's not a sprint. Uh, it is a definitely a marathon. It's definitely for the long haul. And it, are you going to be perfect? Was, was I perfect in doing it week in, week out? No. Every Thursday night, it was devotion night. Uh, just you're around the di dinner table and it's like, you know what? Let's, let's just dive into the word. We don't have to bog down. It's not a 30 minute spiel. It's uh, actually like five minutes. And some of the pushback you might get from your kids, depending on their age, younger or older, I think they'd be like, oh, you gotta do this Bible stuff again. Well, I just like, hey, hey, chill out, okay? It's gonna take five minutes at most. What makes it longer than five minutes is their involvement, is their discussions, is their questions, is their answers, and all that. They, they're one of the ones who are making it five minutes, so there's your win right there. Um, here's some of the resources I have. Oh my gosh, 
makes me roll my eyes. I need to go fix these links. Anyway, um, it goes without say the Bible. You have the ESV study Bible. Uh, you have R.C. Sproul's Mark, uh, St. Andrew's Commentary. Highly, highly recommend that entire series. There's only six or seven books in that series. Just go and get them. They're cover, cover. Just read them. Just read them straight up. They're not technical. Uh, they're so good. Uh, Hendrickson's Mark uh, from the New Testament Commentary Series. Uh, highly recommend that. Uh, William Lane's Gospel of Mark is a technical commentary. I highly recommend. Of course, goes without I say. I'm dependent on Calvin's commentaries. Uh, and I love the Ancient Christian Commentary Series. That's a, a, a tops for me. Um, so all that information is right there. And again, we're just going through this, right? Um, there's a, one little quote. And I love this quote. This is from an old professor when I was at uh, uh, Reformed Theological Seminary in Dallas. Uh, Sinclair Ferguson, you may have heard of him. A little bit famous. But anyway, he, he would not call himself famous. One of these days, I'm going to tell you the story of me sitting in his Doctrine of God class. The, the how that became just the most worshipful, one of the worshipful times of my life. But uh, in... In Mr. In, in Mr. Ferguson would say, I sometimes wonder, my dear friends, if one of the questions, if one of the first questions God would ask me at the day of judgment, as he assesses my life, is not going to be, how well did you preach? But what kind of father were you? How were you faithful to the charges I gave you? That's your first ministry. Isn't it? Not to be using your gifts here or there or in the church here and there. Thank God that you do. But if you do that at the expense of your children's spiritual well-being, you need to be absolutely convinced that in your soul <clears throat> that you can do no other than leave your husband, your wife, or your children for the sake of the gospel. My friends, it all starts at home. And that's not an exception like, yeah, yeah, it starts at home. I would say shore that up first. Like, lead your home, walk your home through that. And again, if you're single, you have roommates, get together. Like, God placed y'all together for a reason. Like, really, really take advantage of that. Uh, your husband and wife with no kids. Uh, yeah, that's, you're, you know, go through the Bible together. Stay in the Word together. And I'm going to be honest with you. Like, me and my wife don't, we're not in the Bible together. Uh, we do pray. Uh, and there's like, you know, the, the whole Christian thing of like, oh, not as much as we should. Well, you know what? There's God's grace for that. So, you know, just be in God's grace and go after him all the more. So, so anyway, that was just an encouragement. Now, if you're single and you live alone and you're living your best life now, uh, just grab some friends. Just like, Hey, you know what? Hey, can we do this together? And be like, sure. That's cool. And if you're like, this is like a little bit too milky for you, like this is kind of like, you know, I've been in church all my life. I just graduated from seminary or whatever. That's fine. Just jump over to uh, my Romans Bible study. Just yeah, hit that up. And if that's still so too simple, I don't know what to tell you because I keep things simple. I don't like things complex. If you want something more complex, go back to seminary. I don't got anything for you. So, um, so all that said, an introduction. Probably that was like a 10-minute introduction. I don't know what my recording... Eight-minute, 48-second introduction. Boom. I love it. So, so anyway, I'm going to walk you through this. Here's the text. And if you're familiar with my the Bible study, there's like many, many more subsections of this. Uh, if you are in the... Uh, it's very... This family devotion is very akin to my meditations, which I may rename... Because I'm kind of deciding on what my meditations are. But stay tuned for that. Uh, this is the text. Okay, well, that's pretty standard. Here's the discussion. Here's some questions that you can ask. And if you think of any other questions, just pop them in there. Uh, and then at the end, here's the devotion from all of this. Um, what should we get from this? What's the application, if you will? Uh, I know a lot of pastors have a hard time, like, they call it landing the plane. Like, I can preach the text. But how does that apply to us? Why do I even care? And so I hope the devotion part is like, hey, this is where you should land on this. Uh, and if you come up with anything else, I think like just pray about it. And that's the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that's the Holy Spirit. 
Um, as long as it, it, again, you're like within, within the scripture teachings and you're not contradicting the teachings of Christ Jesus. Uh, I just wrote um, a future meditation on 1 Timothy 6, and he makes it, Paul makes it very explicit. We are n- not to teach false doctrine, something that contradicts the teachings of Christ Jesus. So keep that in mind. So here we go. Mark, chapter 1, verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, so here's the green introduction. Let's go idea by idea. So, in the beginning, okay, well, let's think about this. Who wrote Mark, uh, and who is Mark? Well, very, very simple. Mark is said to be the writer for Peter. If you want to look up more about him, there's like tons of resources, but in specifically the Bible that you would already have, if you look in Acts, anytime you see the word Mark, uh, the name Mark or John Mark, that's, that's who Mark is. He is very, uh, he's a literate. Uh, he knows how to read and write. Peter, by all accounts, might have not known how to do that. He was a fisherman. Uh, like most of the disciples, they may have not known how to read or write. Uh, but Mark would end up being his writer or his secretary. Um, uh, so this is really the gospel. Maybe it's, it's could have been the gospel account according to Peter. So that's be pretty interesting. And so what does Mike, what, excuse me, what does Mark write about? Mark testifies about Christ Jesus. Now, each of the Gospels tell a different perspective of Jesus. And this is what I think is very, very helpful to keep in mind. In Matthew, um, G- think of Jesus as the king uh, and an animal that he's akin to would be like the Lion of Judah. Okay, and Luke, I'm going to get back to Mark, but in Luke is Jesus as man. He is the human, the man. Uh, John is Jesus as God. You see the eagle and that the glory of God. In Mark, uh, he Mark portrays Jesus as the servant, as in as the ox. Uh, and what does all that mean? It's like these are the different facets of what we see as Jesus Christ as Messiah as our Savior, as our Lord. Uh, And then in Mark specifically, it's really what has God done for his people? Specifically, like literally with his hands and feet and with his teachings, what did Jesus Christ do? So, continue on in the scripture, and still in verse 1 of the gospel. But what is the gospel? This is the good news, that God has done everything to save his people to himself forever. All we need to do is to trust in him, believe in him, and love him, and know that everything he does is for his glory and our joy. If God is not out for his glory, we are never free to have joy. But since he is for his glory, in his namesake, and not just for us, we have the fullness of the freedom to love, worship, and trust him joyfully. The Bible is not a bunch of rules. The Bible is all about Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks on who exactly God is and what he has done and what he will do. My friends, if you have not read the Jesus Storybook Bible, that what I just read to you was basically the summation of how the Jesus Storybook Bible, it's a children's Bible that's presented to kids. This is how they portray the Bible as. This is how they portray Jesus as. It's it's for his glory, his namesake. Uh, it's all about Jesus. That's what the Bible is all about. It's all about Jesus. Um, so here's the real question you ask your kids. It's going to sound strange, but hear, hear me out. Do you want in on the fun? Do you want to come and play and be in continuous awe and wonder and joy? in love of him and his glory of God? So come on, let's go. So continue on. Jesus Christ. What we will see in Mark is basically little bitty, tightly wounded passages that speak of all that God has done. Now, if you have read any part of the Old Testament, these little passages in Mark are merely the Old Testament in bite-sized chicken nuggets, except they are much more tasty and actually good for you, better than chicken nuggets. 
Uh, kids would disagree with me, but we know better. Uh, in other words, you are going to see little passages of Jesus did this or Jesus did that, solidifying what God did in the Old Testament. So, my question to you is, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is an audacious claim. This is a big claim. This is almost like a fable, a myth of somewhere. In America, some of us were not blessed with good dads and loved Jesus. Now, some of us got dads that were not so perfect, and sometimes there is a struggle not to compare God as father in light of our earthly dads, when in fact it should be the other way around. As we might struggle with that, in the culture of the Middle East, for example, struggles with Jesus Christ as being the son of God. We struggle with God as father. They struggle with him as being the son of God. That is highly, highly offensive to them. How could Christ claim to be the son of God? For Christ to be the son of God is Christ declaring he is one with the father. But guess what? If you read the Bible, if you've been to church, you already know what I'm going to say. John 10, 30. I and the Father are one. Jesus Christ is making this statement. I and the Father are one. Yet, Athanasius, the, an early church pastor, was so boldly to declare, this is what Jesus came to do. The Son of God became man so that men might become sons of God. That's you and me. Now, when you talk about like being a good dad or whatever, and dads, I'm going to speak to you. Or if you're sons and daughters, if you are, this is kind of like, Maybe my dad wasn't that great, or like, hey, I'm not that good, or hey, I've been a real jerk, jerk, and to my kids for a long, long time, even if my kids are grown or whatever, you know what? There's always room, always time to repent. Today is a really great day to repent, and there's always a time to make up. And when I say make up, you can't re go back and change the past, but you can start obeying God today. Just obey God. Just right now, just obey Him. Take, like, you hear, you see something in the Word, you go and do. Like, but I'm not that eloquent. Well, just go and do. But I uh, have a bunch of other stuff to do. Well, Jesus will actually speak towards that, and we'll get to that later. Um, it's not for us to try to make things perfect. We weren't perfect coming to God because when God called us, He called us while we were sinners. In Romans 5 8, it's in. In his love for us, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It wasn't while we were good, while we were doing better than we were before, while we were really trying hard and all, trying to obey God and worship God. And no, no, no. While we were sinners, while we were at war with God, while we were at enemies with God, Christ died for us. And so, here's the discussion. Uh, here's some questions that you can throw out there. Uh, what does it mean to be a son of God? It's not the son of God, but if you, if you believe and trust God, if you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Romans 8 makes it very explicit that all those who are born of God are sons of God. He calls us a son of God, a son of God, like that's a, that's your title. Like in daughters, like, I mean, if there's any, if you come from a family background where women were not in held in high esteem, uh, like in a patriarch uh, fashion, like women were second class citizens or anything like that. Well, guess what? That's not the way God sees you. He calls you a son. Like that's your, your make no mistake. You're at the same level as males. So you have males in the kingdom and females in the kingdom. You're exactly on par. There's no, in terms of like inheritance, it's one and the same. It's crazy, right? And you think, oh, there's no, well, why in the Bible that, that you know, the firstborn uh, son received a double portion? Well, our firstborn is Jesus Christ. We're about, if you, you catch the Roman series, you're about to see that in Romans 8. That's a spoiler alert. Um, but, since we are all co heirs with him, we, we, we inherit everything that the son inherits. And he has inherited the entire world, and we co heir with, the with all those things in the world. The world belongs to God, and we belong to him, therefore, the world belongs to us. Does that make sense? So that doesn't make us kings or lords of this earth, but we, we are co heirs with that. So 
Anywho, uh, are you an adopted son of God? Here is, here is something to make your, your family think. Like, are you an adopted son of God? Like, read, go read Romans, starting at first, Romans 8, verse 14. Start reading that. All who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Are you led by the Spirit? Then you'd be like, yes. But sometimes, like, a kid will be real honest and be like, I don't know if I am. And if you're not, you would not call yourself a son of God. Um, the last but not least, I'm along the same tread is, are you are you his kid? Do you if you're his kid, you belong to him. Do you trust him? And if trusting is hard for you, that that's the time to kind of open up and and walk through that. And uh, and here's the thing about salvation. It's I'm going to go back to John three where Jesus is describing the work of the Spirit. You see how the wind blows because you see the trees move and the grass move, but you don't know where the Spirit's at. Uh, you can only see what he does. And so in that, salvation belongs to God alone. So there is a sense of urgency, and yet salvation just belongs to God, and it's going to be his work to do in your family member, your wife, your husband, your your parents, or your kids, or your roommates, or your neighbors, or you know your best friends, or whatever. If they don't believe and trust, and they don't obey, just, that's God's grace. Right now, the, the kindness of God is towards them. And one of those examples is that going through the Bible together, examining, like letting the scriptures speak for themselves and being like, what do I believe about this? Uh, and you got to take time on this. Take all the time you need. This is not a rush. This is, this is your soul and heart is at stake. So here's the devotion. Here's the takeaway. If you believe and trust in him, in what Jesus said, in what he in what he said, in what he did, then yes, you are his little kid. And guess what? You're his little kid forever. That's crazy, man. You can't be, not be his kid. That's weird, right? Uh, here's the thing: God doesn't lose his kids. It's a uh, uh, John ten twenty eight twenty nine. It's like uh, uh, I, I all those I bring to the Father, and no one can snatch them out of his hand. No, nobody can be snatched out of my hands. You have the double security of God the Father and God the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you are marked, you're clenched, you are forever his kid. And you're like, hey, you know what? I know people who grew up in church and left the church and they're they they they're still not back. Well, we're going to get into that, I promise you. So anyway, that's the gospel of Mark. Uh, but also that is family devotions. Um, we're going to uh, kind of chit chat and talk just like this. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitch on the chat. And if you don't catch this live, uh, it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on a podcast. I have numerous ways to get in hold of, leave a comment, do whatever you need to do. Uh, I hope to hear from you. Uh, catch us on Monday. Our next episode is Monday. It's going to be around, it's going to be around 1230 central. I have a little delay in there. Uh, and uh, hope to hear from you then. Until then, later.